Hey, what's up, guys? It's Higgins in Japan, and I am. Look like I'm sitting in some sort of control center. I don't know what I'm doing. Anyways, um, so wanted to make a quick video here while I'm the only one sitting in the teacher's office and praying that the phone doesn't ring again because maybe I didn't answer it the first time when it rang. And that being said, so yes before I was rudely interrupted by a ringing phone or someone coming into the office. Um, yeah, I wanted to make a video. Now this isn't uh, per se like, okay, at first this isn't one of those like, somebody tagged me and I'm gonna make a list type videos, which I've done like two, so don't get all bent out of shape. Um, anyways, no, this is like a, a, a thing that like a lot of my friends and family you know, always ask me when they talk to me is like, what do you miss? You know, what do you miss about America? What do you miss about, you know, being uh, in, in Japan? Like, what do, what do you miss from home? So I thought that I would make just a quick list. Um, I came up with like five things. Um, and uh, yeah, there are also some kind of like cultural, are they cultural things? No, no, they're not. I have the list right here, and they're not cultural. They're just things that are, are different from uh, the way that things are done in America. So, I mean, I guess you could call them cultural differences, but they're not really. Anywho, um, in no particular order, number five, um, the convenience of central heating and <laughs> central air conditioning. Now, it's not really a big problem so much um, with my apartment because I live in a one-room apartment, and so... It doesn't really take that much effort to heat it or cool it. Um, lucky for me, well, lucky for me in the summer, my apartment stays really cool because I have really drafty windows. Bad for me in the wintertime because I have really drafty windows, and so I have a high heating bill in the in the wintertime. Um, not so much air conditioning bill in the summertime because I don't actually use my air conditioner as much. Um... But yeah, so having the convenience of that in, say, like public sp public places like schools <laughs> or offices, um, yeah, it, you tend to see a lot of people with like jackets on over their normal, you know, work clothes or, um, you know, I mean, the, the schools here, I mean, the school I'm sitting in front of now, the it's a newer school, and so it's not that bad. Um, it wasn't that bad this year, and actually... Uh, my English classroom in this school is air conditioned and heated. So it's a newer school. My other school is an older school. It's going on 40 plus years. And so it doesn't have central air conditioning. It doesn't have heating in the rooms. So um, they already started actually breaking out the, uh, the gas stoves that they'll put in the classrooms and I'll get for my room. Um, our teacher's office does have heating and air conditioning, but... Um, they're rarely on. Uh, number four, uh, the ability to find a good hamburger. Now, you can go to McDonald's and you can go to like Moss Burger um, and they have pretty decent food. Uh, McDonald's, I think McDonald's here is better than it is in the States just because uh, like the presentation, it actually looks like the picture for, for the most part. Um, and it's usually always made to order. Like I've always had to go to McDonald's and kind of wait because they needed to actually make my food, not just pull it out of some, you know, under some hot lamp and you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's usually been, you know, almost made to order type stuff. Um, I mean, you can go to places like the Hard Rock Cafe. <laughs> we tend to go there every couple of months and get just disgusting amounts of food, of like American type food because you know, it's one of those things that you, you do kind of miss being able to get a good burger. And, and I mean, in America, I swear, it's like every restaurant has burgers. Um, and so you have that variety. Here it's like, you know, Moss Burger or McDonald's and those can kind of not taste the same. And also, you know, you just might not be into that kind of stuff. So, All right. Number three, uh, finding clothes and shoes that are actually in your size. I wear size 12 shoes, uh, which translates to 30 centimeters in Japan. And it's darn near impossible to actually find shoes in my size. 
Um, I have been able to find a couple pair of shoes at like Costco because they do have like some some bigger sizes. I don't know why I said it like that. They do have some bigger sizes in shoes. Um, like ABC Mart occasionally carries uh, bigger shoe sizes, but it's really hard. You you mostly just buy things offline. You buy stuff on Rakuten or Amazon or any list of online retailers. Um, number two, oh, places staying open late. Like in the States, I felt like if you wanted to go do something, even in Pennsylvania and Lancaster, like you could just go and there's like a diner open or something. Um, I feel like a lot of places in Japan close early, at least in this area. It's probably different if you're living in like Tokyo or Osaka where there's a bigger nightlife culture. But even that, I mean, even places there close. So, yeah, just that, the like stuff on Sundays is usually kind of closed or, or Mondays. It's weird. Um, the other thing is like ATMs at the bank. The bank will actually close when the banks close for the most part. Um, you can't get money out of the ATM that's at the bank. Even if it's separated by a separate wall, they will lock the door, which doesn't make any sense to me. Both of the banks in town are like that, uh, that I use. Uh, they close at like, I want to say five or six, I forget. Um, but like, they'll have like a separate section that the ATMs are in that is completely separated from the main building. And they'll lock the doors after a certain time. Like, you just can't get in to your own bank to use an ATM, which doesn't make any sense to me. Um, now, if you go to a convenience store, 7-Eleven, Family Mart, those you can get money out of any time. Um, unless it's, like, the first of the year when it's bank holiday, which is another nonsense thing that doesn't make any sense to me. ATMs don't need to take a nap, so don't turn them off and don't restrict me from getting my money. So there, take that whoever's listening to this nobody's listening to this and number one of course the number one thing on this list <laughs> that you miss living in japan is you miss your friends and family it's true you miss your friends and family you miss the convenience of being able to just jump in your car and go to your friend's house and watch you know stupid movies or you know go out to eat with your friends or just you know, see your friends on a normal, regular basis. It definitely puts a strain on things. Um, if you're not careful, you can totally alienate yourself from your friends and your family. Um, but, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, I say it a million times in videos and I've made a video about it, about like, if living abroad is for you. And that's one of the, that's one of the major, major things that, uh, you know, can kind of separate the people that can from the people that can't. Um, you know, if you can be away from your family, you know, I'm over 6,000 miles away from, you know, all my friends and family and yeah, like I said, you miss your friends, you miss your family. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're doing what you love teaching in Japan, what I'm doing, I don't know how to word that without sounding like really bad. Like it doesn't really matter. No, I mean, you do, you miss your friends and family. That's not, I'm not saying that I don't. But, uh, yeah, it doesn't bother me. <laughs> I mean, yeah, whatever you get, you get what I'm saying. So that's it. There's a, there's a list. Oh, bonus. I just thought of another one. <laughs> um, is, uh, being able to like actually catch sports when they either air live or at a decent hour. Uh, because like I'm a, I like watching football and I really like hockey. So being able to keep up with those sports is pretty non-existent unless you, you know, watch like video clips and highlights and stuff. Now on the weekends, it's, it's kind of easy to catch hockey because there's usually like a, a Saturday morning game <laughs> I can watch, even though it takes place, you know, Friday night in the States, I can catch it on Saturday morning. Um, football on the other hand is pretty much, you. I don't watch football at all except for highlights because uh, usually the games are on at about two or three o'clock in the morning on a Monday morning, and I'm not waking up to watch football. Like I'm not that big of a fan. So, all right. That being said, this video has almost hit 10 minutes and that's ridiculously long. And I apologize that you had to sit through this nonsense. 
I don't actually apologize. I take that back. But there you go. So there's a list of things that you could possibly miss. That's the things that I possibly miss living in Japan. If you want to leave a comment or suggestion or, you know, any kind of thing like that in the bottom comment section, that's what it's there for. If you want to go to facebook.com slash Higgins in Japan, like that page and follow me on Twitter. And